Hi everyone, this is Dylan again from Dylan's Reptile Time. Hope you're all doing okay. Uh, so this week we're going to have a look at desserts. Now my favourite dessert is an apple crumble with a custard. I know it's old school, but I just... Cut! It's deserts, not desserts, you buffoon. Oh yeah, that does make more sense. Yeah, sorry. This week we're going to have a look at deserts. Now a desert is another habitat. And it's a very dry place, the desert. It's got not got very much rain at all falls there. And a third of the world's surface is actually covered in desert habitat. So you've got places like the Great Victoria Desert in Australia. You've got the Sahara Desert, the Sandy Desert in Africa. And in America, you've got the Sonoran Desert and the Mojave Desert. Uh, but they're pretty much found in every continent. And did you know deserts can, can either be hot or cold? So you can have hot deserts like the Sahara, the world's biggest hot desert in Africa. Or they can be cold. So you can have a cold desert like the Gobi Desert in China. And did you know as well, the Antarctic, Antarctica, the South Pole, that is just one big desert, really big cold desert, because not much, hardly any rain falls there at all. We're going to have a, a look at, concentrate on the warm deserts, the hot deserts, because that's where all the reptiles live. And um, pretty much uh, most of the animals you find in deserts are things like reptiles, insects, and arachnids, like scorpions. Now, when you think of a desert, you automatically think of sandy dunes with camels walking over them but it's not always the case so a lot of deserts uh, are quite gravelly quite rocky uh, some have a lot of plants like cacti with the thorns uh, so they're not all they're like sand dunes and even though it's a very harsh environment in the desert quite a lot of animals still live there and they've all developed these ways to survive in hot temperatures uh, with very little water so for example if you look at the camel uh, quite an iconic desert animal uh, they've got a few things that help them survive in the desert. By the way, this is a dromedary camel with one hump. This is a, a Bactrian camel with two humps. And that hump there, that stores fat. So when there's um, not much water around, they can use that kind of fat in there to hydrate them and give them energy for a few days, if not weeks. And they've got these wide feet, which allow them to walk on the sand quite easy. And they've all got... Uh, these slits for nostrils there, tiny nostrils, and they've got really big eyelashes to stop the sand getting in their face. So that all these little things uh, are good adaptations to help them survive in the desert. So reptiles like Sparky the bearded dragon here, they do really well in the desert. Now in the wild, uh, a lot of species of bearded dragon live in the deserts in Australia. And like all reptiles, they're covered in scales. Now these scales are really great because they can hold water inside their body and they prevent the water evaporating and escaping out of their body. So that's how they can survive in these dry environments better. Scorpions, they've got an exoskeleton, which pretty much does the, uh, the same job. And many reptiles get their water from the food that they eat. And they can go a long time without eating. Uh, but when they do eat, they can absorb that water from their food, hydrate themselves, which keeps them going for another couple of weeks or so. Now another cool little lizard uh, that you'll find in Australia is the thorny devil, really weird looking lizard, but it's really cool because that goes a step further with its uh, how it gets its water. So its skin uh, can kind of absorb the water, any water around, and then its body, these grooves down its body can channel that water into its mouth. So when it gets like little droplets uh, in the morning like dew on its body, they go directly into their mouth to hydrate it, keep it going. And there's not many amphibians that live in the desert. Uh, obviously they prefer more of a wet environment, but there are some kind of toads that during the hotter uh, periods um, in the desert, they dig themselves down in the, in the sand and they form like a cocoon around their body that keeps them uh, moist, kind of hydrates them. And then when there's a bit of rainfall, they all come to the surface uh, to breed. So yeah, so that was Sparky the Bearded Dragon. So some desert lizards like geckos, like Leon the Leopard Gecko here, uh, he's from the deserts of Northern India and Pakistan. They can actually store fat in their tail. So this big chunky tail here. Uh, so when there's not much food around, they can use those fat reserves in their tail. They hydrate themselves, give themselves a bit of energy and survive a bit longer. And it's pretty much like a camel does with its hump. And there's another lizard that does that called the Gila Monster from the Southwest USA. Really cool lizard. Not only do they store fat in their tail, but they're also one of the world's only venomous lizards. Can actually give you a venomous bite. 
And what you'll find with desert uh, reptiles and animals, their color usually matches the ground where they live. So it's really good camouflage. So a lot of reptiles are sandy colored to match the floor. And if you look at Leon here, his colors look exactly like the ground where he lives. So it all makes him harder to be spotted by birds of prey that might want to swoop over and snack on him. So it gives him a good chance to of escaping. And lots of animals that live in the, that live in the hot deserts are nocturnal. Uh, so it's really hot in the midday sun. So they dig burrows, hide under rocks, and then come out at night time, where it's a bit cooler, uh, to find their food. And tortoises, like the, le uh, like the desert tortoise from southwestern USA, that can dig burrows, hides underground during the midday sun, but it can also dig little shallow pits uh, to catch any kind of rainwater that might want to fall in there. And so it's got something to drink. So it's a really clever way of uh, keeping itself hydrated. And lots of desert mammals that you might see, like the fennec fox and the, the jackrabbit, they've got really big ears like this. And those big ears, they help the animal cool off uh, during the day. So let's have a look at some other reptiles, see how they cool off in the middle of the desert sun. So if you look at this little sand lizard from the deserts in Africa, the sand there is really hot. So to stop his feet overheating, he kind of switches his feet so they're not all on the ground at the same time. Really clever. So it kind of looks like he's dancing though, really, doesn't it? Sorry about that, that's a bit unprofessional. Uh, now, a lot of desert snakes like samboas and horn vipers, they bury themselves down into the sand to avoid the intense hot heat of the day. And while they're down there as well in the sand, it's really good because they can actually jump out and ambush their prey as well because they're completely hidden in the sand. So it's a really good uh, way of catching their food. So some reptiles that live in the desert, uh, they've got this uh, little shovel at the end of their nose, which allows them to shovel through the sand and move around looking for food. And there's one called the um, a little skink called the sandfish that pretty much as the name suggests, can just shovel under the sand, basically just swims through the sand. Yeah, really cool. And a lot of snakes that live, live in the desert, uh, they've developed a way to kind of get, a, get around on the sand and they call it sidewinding. And what that does, it not only does it help the snake keep traction on the sand when it's moving along, but it also ensures that only two points of its body are touching the sand at any one time when it moves. So uh, obviously the ground's very hot, so it helps it, basically stops it from overheating. So let's have a look at sidewinding in action, shall we? So as you can see, that sidewinding motion there really helps them uh, move along the sand and they can move really quickly look at it go so as you can see it's a really effective way for snakes like the sidewinder and horn viper to move around on the sand and i must point out the uh, the world's most venomous snake uh, the inland taipan also lives in the desert in australia uh, and that's got venom uh, similar to that of a cobra but much more potent much more deadly and other animals that you might find in the desert, in Africa, you've got antelope, uh, desert antelopes like the oryx, you've got camels, you've got uh, wolf-like things called coyotes, uh, meerkats, everyone knows meerkats. In America, you've got the jackrabbit with the big ears, uh, you've got coyotes, road runners, little birds, beep beep, and you've got uh, little rats, kangaroo rats that hop around. In Australia, you've got uh, real kangaroos, uh, in the deserts, you've got a, a nice looking marsupial called a bilby, really cute looking. And you've also got dingoes, like dog-like uh, animals running around as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we'll be back soon with another video for you. Okay, take care. Bye.